Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. And one tournament that never disappoints is this one, that is now in its Premier League stage. The best two engines of season 23 will go into a 100 game match before we're able to know which one wins it. With eight engines competing the Premier League, Though we know Stockfish nearly always makes it through, do not underestimate the likes of the Dragon and Leela. So what engines make it to the Super Final will be revealed later on. Komodo's running on version 2917 is so far looking very impressive. Game 23 is looking at the encounter between Komodo and Leela. Would anyone really want to go through 92 moves? <laughs> I didn't think so either, but because this channel doesn't really care of how long a game can be, insofar as it's a game that stands out, this is exactly what we're going to cover. Both the Dragon and Leela are in superb shape, and any encounter between these two engines is by definition going to be a close call. The main reason why I wish to cover this game is because there are tons to learn. If you're not a type of Sicilian player, do you look off and go away? I don't think so. You still need to know your opening theory, which is the first thing you need to know before you're able to get past the opening. Let's see what we can learn by simply not just watching these two engines do their magic, but at the same time to try and understand their moves. Come over to this side and do pay attention to the eel of each engine. We're set up to start the game using an eight move book. I'm going to bring up the stage of how the game starts and then go back to look at what opening we're looking at and where each move comes from. In addition, note the date this game was played. Okay, this is the eight move book, but can anyone make heads and tails out of this opening? We know it's some type of Sicilian. If you religiously adopt the Sicilian, this bishop on g7 looks at the accelerated dragon. Even if you don't know the accelerated dragon, the idea is to be able to understand what is going on. So with this in mind, let's go back and see where each move comes from. After e4, we saw obviously c5, and then after knight f3 and d6, d4 was played. Lila took, Komodo also takes, and with knight f6 and knight c3, Lila opens up the diagonal. Bishop e3 to bishop g7, and after this push, a6 was initiated. Queen d2, now knight bd7. And what we have here is the infamous Yugoslav attack in the accelerated dragon. The theory in the Sicilian is vast, and what you see here is just one line of many. Normally this type of opening leads to a razor-sharp continuation, and this is especially the case if the engines get to castle in opposite directions. The first out-of-book move was this attack, and what Lila does here is to totally ignore this dragon initiative to start her own attack on the other side of the board. And from the word go, here we have it. Komodo castles, without delay, the engine allows Lila to chase after the knight. As you play against the Sicilian, would normally place the knight on e2, but this version of the dragon, is looking at something else. The engine got the knight to find the rim. Lila preps his knight response. And what you see here is Lila appearing to offer a pawn on the queen's side. A5, or queen A5, would cover for the pawn, but Lila does not appear to worry if this guy drops. But do you take or not? Komodo got rid of this guy. Lila repositions the bishop on the 7th, and we have all the signs, or warnings if you like, of something big. Engines do not offer pawns for nothing, and there is always a hidden agenda. Bishop d7 attacks the knight, 
and rook b8 is going to chase after the queen. So from the word go, Komodo got his knight to jump back. And before Leela gets an army to go king hunting, this is what she does. So now with the most powerful pieces communicating on the back rank, Leela also has a hidden agenda. Hidden gem, if you like, parked on G7. Nearly all her pieces are pointing in the right direction. And all she needs is to activate the king's side rook and at least one of the two knights. There should be two led to the immediate attack on the queen. And this is the idea of offering a pawn. Makes life easier when it comes to attacking the opposition. Queen a3 led to this bishop to find the fifth. And again, though this looks like a blunder, we cannot really sound anything. There are many minor pieces looking at this bishop, and some sort of trait has to be on the cards. If this bishop goes, oh, Lila will be dropping yet another pawn. If you take the bishop, how would you do it? Come on, I use the knight. And as soon as this knight went, How wise would it be to get rid of this pawn? If you do this with the knight, there might be a problem. But where is it? Can you see it? It's here. If you eliminate this guy, if you take and take, Lila will be licking her lips. There are other ways to play this, but I'm thinking... We need to show. What if after this guy parts... You turn against the rook. What you see here is a quite complicated position. This bishop attack on the rook is certainly a winner because at the same time this knight is under a two-pronged attack. And yet this actually may not be entirely winning for Komodo. If you discover this check, king b1 will definitely lead to this follow-up check and if you play this one incorrectly, for sure things will get bumpy. Go king a1. What happens here? Well, what we have is a very chaotic situation. Rook a8 and queen h3. And though Komodo looks better because of the pawn surplus. Look at how Leela balances the game. But just using the rook, knight and bishop. Let's come back to see what happened. Right after the knight was removed from the fifth, the dragon launched after the knight, and as soon as this knight backs off, the dragon does go on to arrest this guy. What we saw next is similar to what we saw earlier. Yet <laughs> miles apart. Lila went on to arrest this guy, and though bishop a7 is pretty much playable, the dragon was calculating 100, well, 100 or 1001 other variations, if not thousands so not bishop a7 but this thrust instead this knight on b5 goes absolutely nowhere because as soon as he moves away the queen on f3 will drop like a fly knight e5 to create a confusing picture but to the king to make his way west and check out how every move matters Queen d7 and the pressure on the knight led to this queen move. Let me tell you this. Normally what you get to see is a queen to move away from files or ranks. Rooks occupy. But to pin your own piece and queen, something we don't get to see every day. I would love to explain a bit more here. But due to the length of this game, this will not be possible. Normally this queen will never be on b3, and yet here she is. This knight move to e5 was not really explained, but what do you think he does here? Okay, this may look to be the easy part because he covers his brother on the third. Do you want to see an interesting move and the one Lila executed? This was it, but was this a blunder or what?
Well, it stands to reason if the 925 was there to protect his twin brother on a fray, but he's protecting him, this has to be an outright blunder. Correct? When I first looked at this position, I couldn't understand it. The more I looked, the less I could understand. Why can't Lilo go on and gain the night? If you watch the Stockfish game against Slow, well, was it? Yeah, well, that was Slow Chess. Go back to that point where Stockfish offered an entire rook to gain access into g6. This here is not dissimilar. If the knight drops, the bishop now, in a way, hindered by his own pawns. If the queen comes under fire, this knight on b5 not only will perish, but look how fast they are activated her pieces. Most importantly, is this vicious looking bishop on g7? And things can be looking good for Komodo. So for this very reason, after knight c6, this is how the dragon plays it. It's an incredibly difficult move to understand. It's most likely this guy will drop, but how do you take? You let use the knight, and with Komodo, making sure this knight on the fifth remained here, this is what the engine does. Rook a8, which was played in one thing. Lila is looking to activate her rook from f8, no doubt about it. As soon as the dragon saw this rook appear in the corner, the engine began to calculate deep. You know, one thing engines are notoriously good at is to win a position to ascertain king safety. And with nearly every single piece pointing out the king, Komodo wanted to make sure he was not going to be surprised. Because the engine's weakest spot is this guy on b2. Komodo summoned the bishop to come in and protect him. And with Lila now going for this rook response, check out what happens next. The knight was picked up to the bishop. But was this a huge inaccuracy on Lila's behalf? What this did was to allow Kamal to get rid of this knight. And the reason why Lila offered the knight was to be able to get on with the job, actually. So, in fact, it's a sacrifice, not a blunder. Getting the queen to move away from b3 allowed Lila to remove this guy from the rim. And because now this knight on b5 is entirely defenseless, the only way to protect him was to back him off. As soon as the knight returned to the third, all hell was about to break loose. With much hanging on the queen's side, and with Leela banking on the fact that she can make ends meet, the engine froze in the bishop by simply eliminating the weakest link on the board. This game was intense. Leela threw everything in the mix, but can she make it all the way to a win? With the bishop coming off, this is how Lila reacts. And whatever happens next, the bishop will fall. Unless Komodo discovers a miracle response. And you know, indeed it does. This is how Komodo plays it. And this is what you call chess to the next level. Any problem you see here is right on this spot, d1, where the rook is. If the rook was not here, this knight would have been attacked. So even if you do go for him, queen c3 is the answer to all your worries. And Lila's plan would not work. If you take and take, Lila would no longer have much to go on. And the game would basically terminate here. Having said this, Lila tried a completely different combo. After knight c4, this is what she does. And boy, was this some ingenious move. And yet, given what is going on the board, how complex is this position? It is quite complex. Lila is on the attack, but she has a problem. The problem is this part on the king's side and with their pawn structure. Why, this nifty queen repositioning there is an eminent mate in one, but can Komodo get there? If you rush to get rid of the knight, then it will be job done, cause 
this is all you would ever need. And let's hear it. Checkmate. So obviously, getting rid of the knights will be fatal. Therefore, when this situation arose, Lila closed the queen's axes into the king's side in this way, and with no mate in sight, she's now looking to inflict some major damage. Rook h3 led to the knight to perish. Her majesty is now forced to face the other queen, and as soon as the rook backs off, both queens departed, and the game now basically dies down. Rook b3, the only response, led to this, and what you can see from this point is pretty much a simplified situation. Point-wise, the score is equal, but normally, in an end game, pawns are always worth more against the bishop. But what you see here is not entirely equal. Why not? It was because of this defenseless guy on the sixth. As soon as Komodo got rid of him, Lila knew she took the wrong turn, and everything she tried went up in thin air or smoke. King f8 led to the attack on the rook. Lila rushes to reposition him to be able to hold on to this guy, but as soon as the rook mounted the pressure, Lila decides to drop the pawn, but still repositions the rook to at least gain something. So when this guy went, why can't this guy go too? It's because of this potential response. Doesn't look that bad, but this bishop repositioning is extremely vicious. There is a mate threat lurking in the background, and Lila cannot afford to ignore it. Rook e4 and rook d8 leads to this. And should you now trade, you would have blown it all. The idea is not to trade, but just wait. What you see here is a dead draw. However, coming back, it's what follows a special interesting. As soon as this sky on the fifth disappeared, Lila brings the king into the picture, and right after this check materialized, Lila goes on to attack the rook. As soon as this check was delivered, would you believe we had to reach halfway? There were another six moves before this. King d7 led to this avenue of play. And what the dragon gains from this is to just be able to hold on to this guy in h4. King d6 resulted to a very clever continuation. It was all about this rook repositioning. But what is the rook doing here? We are going to see very soon. With everything kept in check, Lila is restricted to either a king or rook move. Then Jean came closer to the bishop. The dragon backs him off to this outpost. And with Lila opting for yet another king move, this is how the dragon answers. As soon as the king returned to the sixth, the dragon replied this check. And just observe how this check safeguards this guy on h4. King e7, let's see yet another check. This check now disprotects this guy on h4, but would Lila get the chance to grab him? With his majesty dropping back to the very last, the rook returned to this outpost, and with now Lila going for this rook repositioning, this is how the dragon answers. We know this game can only lead to one result, but it may take time, as this is probably the reason why this game was so long. Bishop b4, it's a repeat move. Commander tries yet another bishop move, and though bishop c3 needs no explaining, for those who wish to know, it's the only way to get the king to be able to gain space on the board. The bishop will be used as a shield. King e7 got the king to also start climbing. With Lila now getting her rook to find the first, there comes the king into play. King e6 resulted to this brand new check. His majesty backs off. And though bishop b4 is perfectly playable, Commander tries something as exciting. This is how the engine plays it. Has Commander just offered this guy on h4? And is this move equal to this? 
Should you go on and get rid of this guy? This will certainly be equal to this. Because a mate in 13 clearly registers on the board. So we're not going to question this. In fact, allow me to make a correction. It's not a mate in 13, but 12. And for this reason alone, Lila does not eliminate this guy from the fourth. But calculate best to... What does she do? To move him with this check. Bishop d4 led to this rook to back off by one square. Komodo backs two, his own rook to the first, and with Lila getting her own majesty returned to the eighth. This is how the dragon responds. Komodo is just rearranging what it has until it is able to find a way to checkmate Lila. King e7 resulted to this lift to the sixth. Lila two tries this rook repositioning, and via this rook move, Lila just repeats, rook c4, king d7, and rook a4. And as soon as Lila repeated, only now we saw this check appear. King f8, let's do this. And with yet another rook move being repeated, Lila is just waiting for it. In with the check, flush the king to the 7th. And the next a to turn moves look so boring. We saw this rook move, and after king d7, this is what we saw. King e7, let's see yet another very lame rook response. But in games such as this one, nothing matters unless you do not get there. Rook d2, let's see repeat, and with Lila doing exactly the same thing. Rook a3, Rook d2, and if Komodo is not careful, a draw might be on the cards. In with a check, king f8, and rook a5, and to the king to return to the seventh, and we now Komodo occupying the last with the rook. What the engine manages to do is to just force Lila to go for a rook move. Having repeated for the nth time, we saw another wasteful move. Lila repeats again. And with rook a6, these last 10 moves or so, and probably the next five, have to be the most laboriously and boring moves in the history of the game. Rook d1, duh. Rook a7, king f8, and finally this rook move to try and get the rooks to come off. But what would you think happened here? Lila rejects by repeating. Commander returns with yet another check. And with his majesty once again forced to the seventh, this is finally how Komodo does his thing. I know what many people would say. Why didn't Komodo go for this initiative earlier? And save us all the hassle. Rook d1 led to the instant elimination of this guy. And right after this rook repositioning, which basically does nada, this is what the dragon does. King e8, led to this push, but this is something anyone expected to see. With this guy now dropping, just don't ask me to explain this Komodo follow-up response. This is what the engine plays. King e7, led to this push. Lila checks the king, but right after the king found the sixth, this is how Lila answers. And... Here is where nearly everything happens. It was this push to the seventh. Rook g3 to stop this guy at basically zero effect. As soon as this move materialized, a mate was triggered. Lila was just trying to delay the inevitable. She came in with this check. His Majesty found the seventh. And now via this rook response, Komodo goes on to promote to a brand new queen. Rook c2. Let's king b6 and rise after this hopeless push to the fourth. A very long mate was now reduced to just three moves. In with a check, king d6, and now this brand new check. The game ended with the next move. After king e6, this is how Komodo terminates this game. And why not? Let's hear it for the first. Is it the first? Second time today. Well, at least it's got to be the last time today. 
Though Komodo struggled at some stages to make ends meet, he still found his way to victory. From this game alone, we can work out the following. Komodo was the strongest engine. As soon as the promotion took place, Amazing 19 was triggered. Roxy 2 was technically a blunder because that Mating 19 had just shrunk to a Mating 5. And this is yet another classic where even one of the best engines can get confused. No one knows why and how these things happen, but here it is. Lila spent no time executing this check. The correct way to do this is to swap everything on G8. I think I said a mate in 19 was triggered at this point, but I was wrong. What we see here is in fact a mate in 15, and right after the queen is removed, a mate in 14. But even with this, Lila accelerates her own path to a checkmate by choosing the wrong path. Does this matter in the end? It has to. A mate in 15 and a mate in 5 creates a gap. If one engine was in time trouble, this could make all the difference in the world. It didn't in this game. Komodo showed who was the boss here. At some stage, Lila pushed on and on. The dragon only held his position, but at no point in this game came under any real trouble. And this is how the Yugoslav attack in the Sicilian dragon works. Does this mean Lila is over and out? She is in this game. But there's so many other encounters to follow. This one we've got all the way. There are three engines to look out for. Two other ones we saw here today, and the other one is Stockfish. And now, before I leave you today, this is just a filling a gap. And this concerns the Premier League stage. It's actually coming to a close. And indeed, from what I can see here, Stockfish is basically in the Super Final. But in very close second, we have both Komodo and Leela with exactly the same points. So everything will be determined in the very last round, which is tomorrow. So what happened so far? But in some very long games, the encounter between Komodo and Leela, not this one, one of their encounters, was 242 moves long. But the record game was the one between Stoflace and Leela, a game that lasted 256 moves. Both of them ended in a draw. But anyway, this was it for now. Your chess puzzler here, and you know the drill. Safety always first.